Today, autonomy is being applied already in maritime, air and land transport. Autonomous mobility uh, is a real area of strength for the UK and one that builds on two existing strengths in the UK economy, our transport manufacturing sector and our digital communications and AI sectors. We just right now can't prove that autonomous systems are safe. So we need to somehow come up with a methodology across the domains to prove these are safe. If the sectors can work together and learn from each other, there is a huge prize at the end of all this. So one of the most simplest events at sea, collision avoidance, that event could play out 300 million times in terms of the permutations that we need to look at. We need a virtual world to validate the real world. So we have certainly, as I say, the strength and depth or breadth of expertise to create the virtual world of assurance at speed and to be a global leader. So it's a unique opportunity for us to, to create this within maritime, but it can be across all modes of transport. A typical aircraft certification program takes five to eight years. We don't live in that world, in the world of drones and autonomy. How do we do it faster, but still have the level of confidence that we need? Perhaps uh, one of the biggest challenges that we have within government is the regulatory side. If you regulate too early, you, you might stifle innovation. If you regulate too late, then someone else might have done it. The same thing with standardization. So you've really got to try and find a balance between those two. If you want to prove an autonomous system or an automated system is safe in any of these domains, you need research on only three things, and these include test scenarios. You need a test environment, and ultimately you need to make an argument that these systems are safe. If we can crack this puzzle of scenarios, test environment, and a safety argument, we are there. Identifying the scenarios has to be fundamental to the entire safety assurance framework. How can we have a common approach across the domains when it comes to identify scenarios? A third of a billion scenarios for a very simple situation. We can't do that in real world. So there is a need for simulation. There are different ways of testing these systems. There would be a continuum where you'll have a completely PC-based simulation to a combination of hardware and software to a test track or a test bed and ultimately real world deployment. And lastly is the safety argument. If you do not know what are you testing against or what are you measuring yourself against, there's no point having that. So we need a way of defining safe behavior. Each of these three rules of air, land or sea, they are very, very different in a sense, but they're very, very similar from another sense. In order to bring these things together, we need a framework. So you can make an argument that my system is safe enough if we can prove for all the scenarios that my system complies with the behavior code. Then you can actually operationalize this entire framework and make a claim that your system is safe. People trust in aviation today as being safe, safer than the roads, safer than rail. We need to maintain that. And autonomy is a, a key enabler potentially as we move forward further into the future with a greater volume of vehicles. Having to uh, hear similar challenges from the land and air, airspace and maritime has been very, uh, very rewarding and refreshing. And I think on vision wise we are all in the same place. How can we think about how other sectors have introduced, you know, really world-changing technology and got people not just along with it, but really changed their lives for the better? Here is a place where we see an absolute need for collaboration. I think different sectors have got different variants of the same problem. What we can learn is what's the same, what's different, but we can all learn quicker together. That's the key thing.